Hello, welcome to another Clevetech Tech Tips video. Today we're going to look at running in a FK style motor, standard motor. This one happens to be a JK Hawk Retro. It's a motor we run in our Intro 32 class in the UK uh, under the BSCRA uh, banner. So we're going to run it in and see the difference in before and after. So to do that, I'm going to use my motor analyzer and my Clevetech power supply. Let's power up the motor analyzer. So I'll plug in my USB lead. Gives the microprocessor the power. That's plugged into the back of the Clevetech power supply and the USB outputs. I've also got my motor power lead connected to the fixed five volts on my power supply and that's turned on. So let's do a power run. You can see this motor analyzer is one that doesn't have the track module fitted to it. So it's only got four options on the main screen. Let's connect some power to the motor, connect the test leads, and put it into the adapter that's specifically made for FK type cans. Now I'm going to put a link to my motor analyzer videos on the screen very soon. So if you want to know more about the motor analyzer, how it works, all the options, uh, you can watch one of those videos later. Okay, so I'm going to run the warm-up test. Uh, five volts you can see on the screen, so it's pulling in the five volts from the power supply and telling me I'm, I've got it set to five volts. And I'm going to start my warm-up procedure. So the motor's now running and warming up. You need to put a little bit of heat into the motor first to make sure you get a realistic uh, performance uh, analysis. So you can see the bars going along the bottom, which says it's been running at a steady RPM for long enough. When the bar reaches the end, you have the option to cancel the warm up. So you can see this at the moment is running at nearly 22,000 RPM on five volts. Before we run it in, we're just going to take a quick look at the brushes in the motor. So let's take it out of motor motor analyzer. We're going to have a look through the can, take a look at the brushes. Now I'll probably put a better picture of this on the screen in the actual video, so you can see a closer look. But from this, you can see that there's a couple of little brush tracks. So there's two black lines running around the commutator. And you might even be able to see that the brush is slightly curved where it brushes across the top of the commutator. So it's not sitting nice and flat on the commutator, it's only touching on the two edges of the brush. So when we run the motor in, we're looking to run that brush in so that it makes full contact uh, across the commutator. Now we've seen what the brushes are like before we run it in, we're going to run it in underwater and run the brushes fully in you can see what they should look like and then we'll do another test after that and see if it's improved its performance. So I'm going to connect my power supply to my motor. I have these leads connected to the variable output of my power supply so I'm going to turn that off. Connect up the test leads to the motor and we're going to drop it in some water. Now the water helps to reduce temperature and it helps to conduct more current, so therefore the brushes run in much faster. It also lubricates the bearings as well whilst it's rotating round. So I'm going to drop it in the water, turn my power supply on. Now, different motors require different amounts of time to run in. Obviously you can run it in at a higher the voltage, the more current it conducts, the quicker the brushes run in. So. I'm going to start running mine in round about 6 volts. I'm going to go a little bit higher. Give it about 20-30 seconds or so. And then I'm going to turn it off and then inspect the brushes and see how they run in. 
you can also see the current will eventually start to go up on your reading as the brush is run in. So after you've done a few motors, you'll get a feeling of how much running in you need to do for the different types of brushes and different types of motors. So the current's gone up a little bit here. So I'm just gonna turn it off. Don't take the motor out when it's still running or you'll get soaked with water everywhere. So let's disconnect this and let's have a quick look at the brushes and see if there's any sign of them wearing in. What you could see after that brief running in period is the comm's got quite polished where the brush has run along the comm. So you can see the water's doing its job and keeping the comm nice and clean, stopping it from arcing away. But there's still a big curve on the brush and it definitely hasn't run in to touch the comm all the way across. So this motor's gonna need a lot more running in. So let's carry on. Drop it in the water. This time I'm just going to up the voltage a little bit to 8 volts to run it in a little bit faster. And we're going to leave it there for a while. A few moments later. The current seems to have increased. It's actually showing occasionally it's showing 5.2 amps now. Nearly 5.3. So we're going to stop it there and let's have a look at the brushes. So you'll notice from that last session running it in that the brushes have run in a bit more. Not fully yet, you can still see a bit of a curve on the brush and it's still not making contact on the comm all the way across, but it's looking a lot better. You can also see the water's getting rather dirty, which means that we are actually wearing out some of the carbon of the brush and it is getting closer to being ready. It's also worth checking the other brush, the other side of the motor, to make sure they're wearing fairly evenly because you don't want one to run all the way in and wear out before the other one's ready to use. So keep checking, and obviously if they're getting too short, then stop and then test the motor then. So let's carry on running it in. A few moments later. The water's definitely getting a lot darker in color now. Shake the water out and let's have another look. So after that running in period, you can see that the brushes are running a lot more. In fact, one side has run in more than the other, so I'm going to leave it there for now because they're starting to get a little bit smaller. So give it a quick clean out with some electrical contact cleaner. Quick spray. Wipe it down. Tend to put a small blob of oil on the cam bearing. Rotate that round to run that in. Just give it a quick turnover to make sure there's no contact cleaner left or water left inside. Clean it off and I'm going to run it into the motor analyzer and see if we've improved its performance. So again I'm running it off of the 5 volts fixed supply from the power supply so I know I'm giving it the same voltage as I had last time. If you, if you run it off the adjustable supply you'd have to make sure you set the adjustable dead right to exactly where you had it before. But the good thing about this power supply is you always know that you've got a five volt output and it'll be consistent from motor to motor. So let's warm it up, five volts. So after that initial quick start, the motor's now running at 26,000 RPM which is a big improvement from where we were at before we ran it in. So the warm-up's now complete, it's got some heat into it. It's running 26 and a half now. So I'll end my warm-up. 
Thank you for watching another Cleave Tech Tech Tips video. Going to leave you with one last tip. Don't drink the water. Please like, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, make comments and more content will be with you very soon.